Talking about uh, dural tears, whenever this happens in the OT, always evo almost evokes a common response amongst everybody. And of course, with an incidence of 3 to 5 percent, it forms a significant part of complication during spine surgery, leading to higher incidence of post-operative infections, post-operative neuro deficits, and also post-operative delirium, as uh, shown by some studies. Now, what are the causes? Uh, it is like a partly omission, partly commission. I would say it's more of a omission in 75% and 25% commission. Uh, the, some of the important reasons are like strands and adhesions of dura to the surrounding structures which are not noticed or not separated properly before using the instruments. Bony spikes created during laminectomies can create a sharp edge so that when you retract the dura against those sharp edges you can get a dural tear. A very large prolapse makes access difficult, shortage of space and you might end up causing a dural tear. Too small an approach, you know, I always emphasize that adequacy of exposure and more respect to the neural structures is important than to save 2 millimeters of lamina because that will reduce the incidence of dural tears. Chronic cases, root tethering, root tethering if you try to retract, you can get dural tears. Kerison injury uh, is one of the most common things. If the, the dura gets caught in the side of the kerison and gets torn, most often if there is a lot of blood and the field is not clear, then this can happen. Uh, in severe stenosis, you can have a very friable paper thin dura and it tears off even if you are just slightest of movement. Revision spine surgery are one of the biggest areas where dural tears can commonly occur. Studies have shown some other risk factors like use of a non-dominant hand for doing the surgery or upper lumbar discs need, tend to cause uh, more dural tears. Now, when you get a tear, there are several determinants of what you would do, like the tear size. If it is a small puncture or a small tear, sometimes the distal decompression will cause the CSF flow uh, and reduce the leak and you may not need to suture it. If the location, location of the tear, if it is an axilla or shoulder, by suturing it, you might cause uh, compression of the nerve root fibers and those uh, tears are difficult to manage. Straight tears are easier not to manage, but if you have a multi-directional or a jagged tear, then it becomes difficult. And the quality of dural edges is very important to get a good, uh, strong closure. Some authors advise to tear, leave alone the tears, you know, I would get sleepless nights. I never leave any dural leak uh, unattended during surgery if I have noticed it. The, uh, the, the one of the most commonly done things is direct, direct suturing of the tear. Other things like fibrin glue, fresh blood patch, uh, muscle graft, fat graft, are uh, other techniques and dural patch or uh, autogenously obtained uh, graft are sometimes required. Now, whenever you have a dural lag, the dilemma is whether to finish the surgery and then suture the leak or do it before. So, when there is a dural tear, there is flattening of the dural tube which makes it more prone to injury. Often the exposure is not enough and there is a severe compression which causes the nerve fibers to pop out all the time. And at the same time, if you want to extend the exposure also, it becomes difficult with the dura flowing out, the nerve roots jumping out. So the tear is well exposed, then I suture it first. But if not, then I take my time and do an adequate decompression in the periphery till I am able to get the approximation of the edges easily. I can push the roots inside easily, then I would do the repair. Usually you require a braided material like Mersilk or Vicryl 40 to 60 and I normally prefer to use 50 Mersilk for these sutures. If the long straight tear uh, continuous uh, locking in, I use and if, the, if it is a short tear I use uh, interrupted sutures and keep them long to later tie a muscle patch I will show you on a video. Very friable dura again you may not be able to do this and you might have to resort to other methods. Overall even direct suturing has shown, been shown to have a failure rate of over 5 to 9 percent. Muscle patch is used as an adjuvant usually to dural tears, not, not, not isolated and it is stitched over the dura as I will show you. And fibrin glue is one of the another uh, modalities available. It was very popular some time ago but and it was thought to be like a panacea for dural tears but that is not the case. It is not by itself sufficient. It forms a natural seal over the tear by a mixture of fibrin and thrombin and it adheres like a glue. So in small tears that cannot be sutured it is uh, useful or sometimes uh, you, can, you can use it an adjuvant to seal the holes caused by the needle which you uh, use for suturing. This is the, it comes in uh, uh, 
fibrin and thrombin which are which are incubated and then you there is a uh, special device where the two can be mixed and injected over the dura causing giving a uh, glue like layer on top of the dura fresh blood patch has often been advised as a method however in for anesthesia anesthesia caused like lumbar puncture caused uh, leaks it is okay because the the blood is in the closed space but what happened in surgery is that the blood is in an open space and does not form an effective sealant and i have not found it very useful between suturing and glue studies have shown that suturing is the best method a glue can be used as an adjuvant but it is not at in no way any better than suturing Usually we are advised not to put a post operative negative suction drain because it can lead to suction of the dura but in large surgeries where you have large uh, uh, exposed areas a large hematoma can form and cause a post operative compression and uh, so what i do is i put a drain uh, i keep the drain locked for 48 hours in that time period there might be some situations where there is if there is a, a soakage of the uh dressing or if there is a patient complains of intense leg pain and things like that then i uh, intermittently open to allow some blood to drain out but yet i may, i keep the uh, drain for 48 hours after 48 hours if things are okay then i unlock the drain i leave it for 72 hours and all those 72 hours the patient is strictly in bed for those 3 days i don't follow head low or head high and i mobilize the patient after 72 hours sometimes post operative leaks are detected and uh, these are usually due to sharp laminectomy edges which can uh, hurt the dura when the post operative period if there is an excessive cough vomiting increased csf pressure or a non compliant patient or if you have used the drain and the negative pressure is maintained for a long time no, uh, one of the things to do is not to use staples to use uh, watertight closure uh, for all uh, using a uh, stitch material rather than uh, staples uh in a post operative leak uh, a use of proximal subarachnoid drain is one of the methods described where you put a subarachnoid drain and drain it into the uh, into a container now the important thing is to have a needle over here to let the air out because in a closed system the csf pressure being very low the air the csf may not drain and your device might fail and of course if that also fails then you have to reopen and suture using the earlier methods I had a video, but I'll should I skip it or play the video? I said skip the video. So, how to minimize dural leaks? If you are, uh, we saw the reason. If there are additions, use proper dura dissector. Avoid creating bony spikes uh, while doing the surgery. Avoid retraction without sufficient release. Uh, have sufficient exposure to do your surgery. Uh, avoid rough handling. Be gentle to the nerve roots. use uh, dura retractor and uh, proper suction to avoid carison injury and in friable dura there can be many issues you might have to use a patch uh, a dural patch or a graft operating in lordotic position reduces the stretch on the nerve root stretch on the dura and it can minimize the dural leaks using magnification proper lighting uh, can help you to reduce the leaks and of course uh, the today's meeting the theme is that if we know the reasons why things go wrong then we can prevent them thank you